A Philly was the favorite in this year's Arkansas Derby. It was the D. Wayne Lucas trained secret oath who came into this race off of three straight blowout victories over the Oaklawn track. Indeed, the betters would send her off as the 7-5 to five favorite in the race, but it was the number eight horse, Cyberknife, who was your eventual winner for Brad Cox and Florent Giroux. All right, you got Secret Oath in post position number six, your eventual winner, Cyberknife, in post position eight. Your eventual second place finisher, Barbara Rhodes, is going to be the three, so this race is going to ultimately be 8-3-6. They're off. Good start. Kavadin chasing time. A hard scent doppelganger. Cyberknife is in the mix, and we the people could be five wide at the clubhouse turn. Flavian Pratt will not have any of that. He's going to take him back and drop over. Then comes Barber Road, Secret Oath, and Unoho, and the early trailer is Ben Diesel. Around the clubhouse turn, it is Kavad. He's a length and a half in front of Chasing Time and Doppelganger. Doppelganger wanted the lead. He's done no better than third early. Two and a half to Cyberknife. Then comes We the People. Secret Oath is outside of him, and outside of her is Ben Diesel. Then a length to the Rebel winner, Unoho, and Barber Road is between horses. Only six lengths first to last. Up the backstretch in the 86th, Arkansas Derby, Kavad is the leader. He's five furlongs from the wire and leads. Here's an early move from Cyberknife. He's going to split horses and be a joint second outside, inside of Chasing Time. Doppelganger is four deep, and he's two from the front. Secret Oath is last, leaving the backstretch. Then comes Una Oho. They round the far turn, and Kavad has the lead, but Cyberknife is right alongside. Now Secret Oath is unwinding. She's just gone from last up into third, and look at this move from Secret Oath. She's within two of the lead. There's a quarter of a mile to run in the Arkansas Derby. Cyberknife has put away Kavad, but he has to deal with Secret Oath in the center. Then comes Barber Road, a final furlong. Cyberknife, here comes Secret Oath on the outside. She's still two legs behind. Cyber Knife, Secret Oath is not going to get by the Arkansas Derby winner, and his name is Cyberknife in front. Cyberknife won. Barber Road got into second. Secret Oath was third. All right, you're going to see a squeeze coming out of the gate. The five horse here is going to kind of veer out a little bit. The eight's going to veer in. Uh, the six secret oath is going to get squeezed, and the seven is also going to get squeezed. The seven actually takes the worst of it. Anyway, with that said, here it goes. So you've got secret oath here for Contreras, Cyberknife, your eventual winner. Uh, right here you see the five come out. Secret oath right there is getting the squeeze, and the seven really kind of gets the worst of it. So that was a pretty eventful thing to happen in the first eighth of a mile. All right, they're running down the backstretch now. You see Cyberknife here. He's in a real nice isolated position. That's kind of where you like to be when you're in mid-pack. You know, you got no one, no one uh, directly, you know, no one looking you in the eye. There's just good area there. Right now, um, Secret Oath and Cyberknife are almost on even terms. Uh, but the sh the shuffle back should come soon. You see the blue silks of Contreras. He's going to get shuffled back to last, and then uh, then Secret Oath is going to unleash this like for for about an eighth of a mile. It looked like an Arazi like move. I mean, she just exploded once Contreras. See, he's got the blue silks here. Look how high he's riding. He's just this is a lousy spot to be in. He's going to shuffle himself out of this spot. And then he's going to push the button, and she's going to give a big response. Here's Florent Giroux going up and splitting here with a good aggressive early move. Um, this is a this is the kind of move uh, you need a horse uh, who could make that move a half mile out. I mean, there's certain types of horses uh, that that you try to make the move with, and they won't. Um, but when you got a horse that can do it. It kind of reminded me of like those those uh, moves on Skip Away that like Shane Sellers and Jose Santos and Mike Smith would make. Uh, Bailey too. They he, he liked to, he liked to be moved it early in the race and aggressively. Um, 
you see he gets through there and goes on. So back to Secret Oath back here. This At this point, she's been shuffled back. And here's where Contreras is going to ask her. And when he asks her, I mean, she just absolutely explodes. Watch her here. I mean, we got this in slow motion. And even in slow motion, she should really catch the eye. This is like super slow motion. She's last, but you just see her catapulting past these horses with every stride. And she's got to be like six wide here. I mean, she's so far out into the track. Uh, this is, you know, just a really eye-catching move. She only, you know, she didn't really sustain it. She flattened out and hung on this move, but um, you... <laughs> <laughs> these kind of moves are tricky because you you know you, I, I guarantee you that Contreras didn't expect to get this kind of response and the fact that he got that kind of response one it's impressive um, but two you know I, I think when he runs next time wh whoever the new rider is on Secret Oath you, you know I I think they're gonna they're not <laughs> they're not gonna push the button so aggressively with her so. You see uh, Cyberknife basically taking over here. Secret Oath, she looks menacing from here, having gone from last to, to third in the blink of an eye, but she just isn't going to quite sustain her rally through the stretch. This is what Cyberknife's past performances looked like coming into the Arkansas Derby, and you see the only... The one bad race on his line, it looks like it's the Lecomte stakes when he was sixth beaten ten and a half lengths behind Call Me Midnight in Epicenter. Uh, Epicenter, actually, that was the race that Epicenter got run down. He, he had the lead turning for home. He really Epicenter really ran a game race that day. Like three different horses took runs at him. Uh, but when you watch the replay of this, and we'll take a look, Cyberknife was extremely wide that day. I mean... He, he was just caught out extremely wide on both turns. All right, here's the LeCompte stake. Cyberknife is the six horse. I kind of remember him being like five, six wide on the turn this race. Uh, you see that's Epicenter right here, the number five. Uh, he's going to be one of the favorites for the Kentucky Derby. Um, Cyberknife, eh, he only got hung up about, he's about three, four wide into that first turn. I think it was the, the 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 far turn where he's five or six wide. So epicenter on the lead here, but you see uh, Super Dude, the one horse, is really making him work to clear. And then as soon as he uh, kind of you know kind of clears Super Dude, you're going to see Blue Kentucky make a move at him. And then Papa Cap, who who is a uh, I believe was he the Del Mar Futurity winner? I know he he won a big two year old race in California going one turn. Uh, Papa Cap's going to make an early aggressive inside move into Epicenter. Um, so Epicenter's run pretty hard here, 23-2, and two, 47 flat. And here's Cyberknife, the sixth. He is, I mean, he's just way, way wide here. You're going to see on the, you know, and being wide down the backstretch is one thing, but when you're on the turns, you don't want to be five, six wide like this on the turns. So you see him get stacked up. I mean, he's at least five wide there. Um, there's Papa Cap, the the grade one winning sprinter, take that big, bold inside run at Epicenter. Epicenter fights this run off here, but he's going to get caught by Call Me Midnight. Um, long shot who uh, trips out. Call Me Midnight got beat 10 lengths to Epicenter. These two horses both run in a Louisiana Derby. And with le less pace, less pressure, it was uh, Epicenter winning. But you see the wide trip. Very, very wide trip for Cyberknife. And it looked like the winner, Call Me Midnight, might have been wide too, but he really wasn't. Call Me Midnight is back here isolated inside on the turn. So he's off the screen now, but he got to the rail around the first turn. And it, when you watch Call Me Midnight, he comes swooping wide through the stretch, but he really didn't kick out to the lane. So he was, uh, you, you know, Call Me Midnight was inside on the first turn, and I believe he was maybe no more than two or three wide on the far turn. Here you see Cyberknife here. Let's see where your eventual winner is on this far turn. He's still not in the screen yet. I mean, he come from way out of it to catch Epicenter. 
call me midnight's one of these horses that's going to really need a fast pace in the Kentucky Derby if they go with them. I think he's got the points, but, um, you know, maybe he can pick up the pieces for fourth or something. But, yeah, so he's he's about the two-path. And then as soon as he gets off the turn, he swings out. But he's not losing ground swinging out here. This is a straightaway. So he this, this was a really good ride by whoever was on the eight. I mean, I I thought he rode a good race here. I mean, he got he got the fast pace to set him up. When he was wide, it was in the straights and not, not a – you know, not on the turns, and he's able to just uh, wear down Epicenter, who kind of got run out early, run out late, and couldn't hold. So that's your Arkansas Derby winner, Cyberknife. He's by Gunrunner out of Flower Alley. Uh, both of them hit the board in the Kentucky Derby. I believe Flower Alley might have been second in the Kentucky Derby for Todd Pletcher. Uh, Gunrunner was third in the Kentucky Derby, if I recall. Brad Cox, the trainer, technically won it last year. Uh, there are things to respect about Cyberknife, but he, to me, he's just, I just don't like him as much as I like some of these other horses. I mean, I, I don't think Cyberknife's going to be on my tickets. Uh, that, that Lucas Philly secret oath, though, she's not going in the Derby. She's going against the girls in the Kentucky Oaks, and uh, boy, she's going to, we're going to have to take a long, hard look at secret oath in the Kentucky Oaks because she really had it. A kind of a lousy trip, and she made a real eye-catching move in the Arkansas Derby. I think the gist of this video is, if there's one horse you want out of this Arkansas Derby, it's it might be Secret Oath in the Kentucky Oaks.